Welcome back. You're listening to Real Estate Tips and Tricks. I am your host, Aaron Adams. I'm in studio today with my good friend, Doug Dale. We are online at invest317.com. Today, we've been talking about using your retirement money to invest in real estate. Uh, we had the benefit of national expert Dennis Blitz here, who just called in. He's out in Scottsdale, Arizona at a retirement industry conference. And we've been trying to give investors this the overview of this, this whole idea of using retirement money and controlling their retirement money. Now, Doug, you and I speak to investors from all over the country um, almost on a weekly basis. And uh, this is a topic that comes up, and we kind of hear some of the same questions, and we see some of the same challenges that investors overcome. So you and I have kind of put together a list of, of, of five things that we think are really important for people to understand about self-directed uh, investing. And um, why, don't, why don't you kind of start us off with, with the first one? Sure. And one of the things before we get into those two that we would like people to remember is you know, creating a self-directed IRA doesn't take anything away from you or from your options and investing. It just adds to it. And some people are like, well, what can I not do with a self-directed IRA? You can do pretty much anything else that you have at your Merrill Lynch account. You can still buy the stocks, the bonds, the CDs, whatever else you might want to buy. It just adds another avenue for investing. No, that's a great point because a lot of people think that they're they're withdrawing and taking a penalty yep. or they think they're borrowing against their retirement money. That's not the case. You're rolling over all or a portion of it and then you're making the decision of what to put it in whether it's uh, stocks or loans or real estate and so we happen to be um, big fans of real estate and uh, like Dennis mentioned because of the security and because of the the cash that comes in every month yeah correct and and uh, people have and Dennis talked about this there's a per, their perceived risk of a self-directed IRA again it's just because people haven't been educated on the topic and and that's what we, we always advocate, Aaron, is just people getting educated and taking an active role in their investing. But uh, one of the first things, the, the five things that you and I like to remind people, and the first one is that it takes time. And specifically, it takes time to set up the account. It, it's not an overnight thing. It's going to take two, three, four weeks. So there's no time like the present to get started on it. Yeah, that's true. And a lot of people, it seems like people will like to do one of two things. Now, Dennis talked about using a checkbook IRA, but people can either use a custodian. So in other words, let's say you're at your current job, you have $100,000 and you decide you want to, um, or let's say you have a, an IRA from a previous job and you have 100 grand that you want to start investing and self-directing. So you contact someone like Dennis and they'll either have you set up a checkbook self-directed IRA where you control it and literally you write the checks out for it, or they'll have you use a custodian. And if you get online and you Google Self-directed IRA custodians, you'll get a list of 50 to 75 different reputable companies. These companies are regulated. Uh, they have to keep their money in trust accounts, your money in trust accounts, but they basically, um, you'll, you'll tell them to buy a property, for example, and then they'll sign off on that. All of that takes time. So if you have uh, your neighbor's house next door that's going up for auction next week and you decide that you want to use some of that IRA money to buy it, that's not something that you're going to be able to, it's going to happen overnight. But once you do set it up, then you can move fairly quickly, right? Yeah, exactly. You, know, just, you have to do the initial setup, and then after that, you can take advantage of those investments. Um, one of the other things we like to, uh, to remind people when they're setting up these IRAs, just like any other retirement account, is that you can't take advantage of those investments until you retire. So once, you, once you've put an investment into that IRA, unless you want to take penalties on it, you've got to leave it in the IRA and you can't touch that income. It's, it's for your retirement, not for you to live on. Yeah, I was in New Jersey in August meeting with some investors and um, I spoke about this topic and I had an investor come up to me and he said, hey, I want five houses. And I said, okay. He said, you know, I have $250,000 in my IRA and so I want five houses and I noticed on your expenses and on your cash flow breakdown that I can make about 500 bucks for each house. So that's $2,500 a month, and so I want to I want to set up a self-directed IRA, buy the five houses, and then I want you to send me the $2,500 a month, and I can quit my job and retire. And I'm like, you look pretty young for that. He's like, yeah, I'm 32, but you know, $2,500 that's like that's what my bills are. And what's the problem with that, Doug? Well, the problem is that you you cannot if your self-directed IRA, and we'll talk about self-dealing here in a bit too, but uh, it kind of leads into that, but. 
you cannot take income off of a, an investment that your self-directed IRA makes until you begin taking distributions. Again, unless you want to take a penalty, you've got to leave it in the retirement account. Yeah, and, and I think the bigger problem is why he was so lazy and wanted to Yeah, I was going to say also that he's 32 and wants to retire on $2,500, you know, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, that's a whole topic for a different show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some motivation, man. That's what he needs. Um, yeah. I, the, you know, leading into that topic, though, is uh, you need to be careful about something they call self-dealing. And, and, you know, it would be nice to have Dennis here to, to get into the ins and outs on that. But you need to be careful with your self-directed IRA and how you would create partnerships and how you would um, maintain ownership in properties and things with your self-directed IRA. It's possible, but it has to be done. You need the advice of a professional like Dennis. Yeah, I had a, a, another client come to me and say, hey, I have this brilliant idea. So I have $70,000 in my IRA. I'm going to set up a self-directed, and then I'm going to give myself a loan uh, for $69,900. And, um, oh, no, I'll put it in an LLC. I'll loan my LLC $69,900 at 0.1 tenth of 1% interest. <laughs> and, 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 you know, along that same token, I thought, well, no, you can't do that because that would be self-dealing. And people are always you know, trying to think of ways that they can get their hands on that retirement money prematurely. So fundamentally, if you as an investor um, can't keep your hands off your retirement money, which is becoming increasingly a problem in this country, I think, then uh, you need to set some rules up because the IRS is not okay with you doing that. It's not okay with you giving your spouse a loan or your brother a loan or, you know, there's, a, there's rules. But, but what you have to fundamentally think about is, am I trying to get my hands on my retirement money before I retire? That's the fundamental implication. Now, you can have a self-directed Roth IRA. And what's, a, what, what's unique about a Roth, Doug? Well, the unique thing about the Roth is that you pay uh, taxes when you put put it into that's generally what a Roth IRA is you pay taxes on the contribution but you don't pay taxes when you withdraw it and why that's important is that people are hoping once they get the money into the retirement account it's going to grow so much that they're actually saving by paying taxes now rather than later yeah you know what's funny is I uh, read an article this week actually um, some some Washington legislators were actually um, talking about um, how did Mitt Romney get a hundred million dollars into his IRA I mean, what's the deal with that? You know, what why what tax loopholes are there that have allowed him to get a hundred million dollars? Because what's the annual contribution you can make to your IRA for the most part? It's like three thousand or five thousand. Yeah, it's like, dollars like five or six grand, right? Even if you're self-employed, it's fifty thousand, which we know he wasn't because he worked for the company he founded, Bank Capital, or partially founded. But um, there are loopholes out there for the rich, and you alluded to this at the beginning of the show. That, that enable the rich to get richer. Until those loopholes are closed, it is not uh, dishonorable, it's not illegal, it's not unethical for you to take advantage of those. Um, you know, people were, were kind of chiding Mr. Romney for uh, not taking all of the tax write-offs that he could for charitable contributions that he made because uh, the, the, the insinuation was that he wanted to show a higher tax rate so that people would stop criticizing him for making so much money and paying such a low tax rate. But uh, I thought that was ironic because, look, until they change the tax laws, take advantage of it. You know, there's a difference between maximizing your wealth and minimizing your tax and, uh, and not paying tax or lying about income. You go to jail for one and you uh, retire quicker on the other. But um, because that, those loopholes exist, because those rules are on the books, take advantage of them and grow your wealth as quickly as possible. And meeting with someone like, like Dennis or getting on their website um, is a great way to educate yourself. You can also educate yourself at our events. Um, our next free event is actually this Wednesday, uh, um, the 17th at 6.30 p.m. We're going to be in the Fountain Square Theater Building. I'm going to be speaking for about an hour. If you'd like to attend that, absolutely free, you can reach us at invest317.com or you can call us at 886-612-0346. Also next weekend, Doug and Dennis and I will all be at the JW Marriott downtown. Uh, we're doing our monthly bus tour. All day Saturday, all day Sunday, we'll be teaching you about these techniques. We'll be teaching you about what kind of properties you want to buy, how you make buying decisions. Um, Doug will be teaching you about... Um, Mary Kay makeup applications. As well. <laughs> the funny thing is you actually have a lady that works with you that used to sell makeup, don't you? Yes, we do. <laughs> 
Uh, she's my brother. So anyway, <laughs> um, now there was a couple more on here, wasn't there? Yeah. Sure. We talked. Uh, one of the things we didn't get a chance to touch on. How are we doing on time, by the way? We're doing good. Okay. So uh, one thing we like to remind investors is it is a lot of work when you're using a self-directed IRA, but it's not any more work than what you're going to have or what you should have investing in other, any other fashion. Now, what I mean by that is you do need to, to stay educated and you do need to be active about managing your self-directed IRA, hence the term self-directed. Um, but that's something we always feel like you should be doing anyway. I, any retirement account, you should be actively managing. Yeah, you know, there is a fatal flaw thought process that many Americans have that just drives me up the wall. No one will make more money for you than you. Do not think that you can find someone and they're going to treat your money with more respect than you will. It's just a fatal flaw thinking that sooner or later you may find someone who will do that for you in short term, but over time people will take advantage of you. And so people will someday say to me, you know, I don't want to have to deal with tenants and headaches and clogged toilets. And I, I say, well, yeah, but at least you're eliminating the headache of Enron where all of your uh, wealth just disappears into a stock ticker tape. At least you're not dealing with Facebook, where a, a seemingly great product just keeps going down and down in value. And, and so, um, as investors, Doug and I are incredibly passionate ab about real estate. We're incredibly passionate about building for retirement and living on less than what you earn. And using a self-directed IRA is one of the best ways to do that. Reach out to us at invest317.com, give us a call at 886-612-0346, and, and come back every Saturday at 11 a.m. where we'll be discussing the tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use to build your wealth using real estate. Thank you for spending time with us today, and you are listening to News Talk 1430, WXNT.